I'm Lindsay Lord. I'm the Director of Artist Services and Gallery 924 at the Arts Council of Indianapolis, and I'm delighted to be here with Matthew Cooper, our 2021 Art and Soul Featured Visual Artist. Hi, Matthew. Hi, Lindsay. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I'm really excited to be here um, and have people learn more about you and your work um, and where your, where your art has been and where it's headed and so let's just get right into there it. Go. Um, so I'm so excited. <laughs> so excited <laughs> <to you. laughs> um, so as far as your interaction with the Arts Council, we first got to know you when you were one of our Jiffy Lube mural artists. Yep. Um, and then we've gotten to know you a little bit more. You did one of our mural uh, our murals for racial justice. Yep. Yep. Um, and that is just up uh, hanging here in the arts garden. We're so delighted to have your work here during uh, Art and Soul. And so um, let's just start off, tell us um, a little bit about your background uh, and who you are. Well, um, kind of to give like a, a quick version of it, uh, studied at Ben Sands University where I first got my initial, um, I guess, introduction into like art in school. Mm -hmm. Um, under a professor, but I did more digital work, which is not really my preference. So it kind of discouraged me from following art as a, as a, like a real like practice or showing it publicly. Mm -hmm. uh, but then when I went to IEPUI and uh, I was at Heron, I was still doing drawing classes. Not that I didn't want to do drawing classes, but I was more so interested in being a painter. Yeah. And I didn't know it at first. Uh, so my drawing classes were across the street from the painting, um, from the painting studio. Mm -hmm. And I would just sneak over there to kind of see what they were doing because I was so interested. Yeah. And that kind of changed my whole thought of what I wanted to do for as art. And I knew from there that I wanted to be a painter. Yeah. So as, as a kid, you were always artistic. Oh, yeah. So always. art was always something that just kind of kept me entertained. I guess like mm -hmm. my mother just being a busy, hyperactive kid, you got to kind of keep them busy so in art was always something that I found that kept me quiet kept me out of trouble and it was something that you know as a kid you really don't appreciate it yeah. until you get older and you see other people doing art and you kind of like oh, I can do that too you know kind of like a braggadocious thing like oh, I can do that I could probably do it better yeah. but I wasn't thinking of it that way you know it was just something that I did and I enjoyed as a hobby yeah so talk about um you started out at Vincent's and you took, you, I think you said graphic design. Yeah, like just basic computer, Adobe, Photoshop, the whole like list of computer things that you can do. And I just wasn't interested in yeah. doing graphic work at all. And it, it was just, it was artistic in a way, but it wasn't speaking to you. It wasn't the kind of artwork you wanted to do. It, it, it just, felt like a step closer to where you wanted to be, but not, I, maybe it, not. I don't, I don't know if it was a step closer, it kind of, mm -hmm kept me away from doing oh. or even following like the school style of art it kind of made me not want to do you know have a professor tell me how to paint or tell me what because I was my first interaction with them they were teaching me something that I didn't wasn't interested in yeah, yeah. Um, so from there I was kind of like well let me just figure this out myself yeah that's kind of how to but then when I was you know faced with hearing what I'm I mean surrounded with artists yeah and so Heron was kind of an awakening. You were yes, it was. both in your technique and, and also receiving and giving critiques. Oh, for and, sure, yeah. for sure. It Talk was more my, about that. It was, well, firsthand like art school for like, you know, when you're not really used to like critique and giving feedback and having someone tell you that your work sucks or <laughs> that you need to go back and do something different. You're like, who are you? You kind of take it, you know, coming from where I'm from, you, you take it totally like disrespect. But you have to learn that this is a different language. This is a different arena that you're stepping into. So you got to learn the rules. Yeah. You got to learn how to play. You got to learn uh, what's right and what's wrong. So yeah. it just kind of changed my perspective on a lot, which was good. And yeah. I needed that. So at Heron, you were taking drawing and Africana studies. Is that right? Yeah. So I studied um, just drawing. And yeah, my minor was Africana studies, just trying to mix those two together. Because I thought, it, I feel it's still that it's important that African Americans see representation in museums, art, um, music, and all those genres. Yeah, yeah. Um, talk about, so you and I met in your studio a couple times, yep. and I should, I should back up and say that um, you are just a delight to talk to. <laughs> Thank you. Just, you know, 
I set up a meeting for, for <laughs> you know, you set a, up a meeting yeah. on your calendar for an hour, yep. and I was in your studio talking with you for three hours. We probably talked just... about nothing that you came in to talk about, <laughs> <laughs> which was so great. <laughs> but, but just, you know, your passion for art, your passion for other people's art, you oh, took yeah. me to another artist studio. It's just so apparent how much it means to you to be a creator. And, oh, yeah. And you definitely have something you want to say through your art. And so talk about, um, you mentioned when we met that you've, you've sort of always had something you wanted to say from the very beginning when yeah. you were young. And so I was wondering about your, the message you've had and how it's evolved from when you were little to um, when you uh, ended up at Heron and now here. Um, that's a lot. That's a lot. Of, yeah, <laughs> that's, that, a lot to that's, dive that's into. a mouthful right there. Yeah. <laughs> but I think more so like just like pulling from them from my childhood, which is something that I try to always. A lot of people like to reach back from their childhood, use that as inspiration to help them move forward. Mm -hmm. I was the opposite. I was trying to get away from my childhood, mm -hmm. get away from my, you know, the, my upbringing, to create a new way for myself. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of like who I am, like, and that's who I am as a person. Like, I just like to do stuff my way. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I have a good enough head on my shoulders to make right and wrong decisions. Sometimes I'm morally correct and sometimes I'm all the way off. But that's the beauty of it. Um, but yeah, so just, I think, with being younger, being the youngest, um, you kind of always overlook, you really don't get to speak up and T speak for yourself everyone's speaking for you you kind of in my household I got my brother's clothes I got his stuff when he left so I never got the choice of anything so just being in control of my own choice mm -hmm. to do something that I wanted to do was very like it was it was powerful for yeah. me you so start even as you were young as a way to but I even know that yeah, yeah, yeah. To, as a tool to speak yep. louder to, to just to speak up yeah um, and then as I got older I wanted to be I don't know, I think that my childhood never being able to like talk about it, it grew into anger. Mm -hmm. And then that anger made me want to explode on this canvas or paper or whatever it is to say. Mm -hmm. And just scream at people, really just like say, hey, I'm here. Like, appreciate me, look at me, see the value that I have as a black person, as a black kid, young man, and where I'm moving mm -hmm. to. So, and I think, you know, in this world, like we can see it today, like the climate, like, they really don't appreciate black humans, black people, mm -hmm. you know, so, and then, like, and I wasn't in, you know, kind of, like, rambling right now, but it's, like, at that point, I wasn't even thinking about, like, what it means to be, like, represent, represented as a black person, how I'm supposed to carry, and I was just saying, like, hey, I have something, like, I'm a creator, I know that I see you're doing what you're doing, but I got something different, mm -hmm. and I need for you to listen, and I just, that's just kind of been my focus and like yeah. my drive ever since. Yeah. But it didn't always come out that way. You know, my first teacher at IUPY, Anila, she smacked that down quick. Like yeah. she was like, hey, you're not about to be great today or tomorrow. So chill out. Like, I understand that you got something, you feel that you are this great artist, but you got to hone that, yeah. that anger and yeah. you have to be able to, you know, execute it on paper or canvas or whatever this medium is yeah. so people can learn. understand it. Yeah, learn that visual language yeah. so you can successfully really get your message yeah. across. So it yeah. just doesn't come off as this angry black person. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. not, and which is the easiest label to slap on you, but that's, it's, it's, it's not even that. It's more so like, you know, I'm inspired. I have ambition. You know, I got, I got something special. And yeah. sometimes when people don't see it, you're kind of like, like, what, what? <laughs> she want to shake something it's like but I learned that you have to you have to transfer that to your work yeah you know because yeah. you can say you can scream all day that you great that you good but yeah sometimes your work don't translate that and it's like you're just screaming yeah. and that's what I was doing I was just screaming yeah <laughs> just screaming just screaming, yeah. <laughs> just screaming. <laughs> so um talk about um you know the kind of message that you were trying to convey in the work uh, that's behind you with, um, which feels like a really, uh, a really, really large, a large idea, um, you know, um, um, placing, placing black people in these um, historical portraits that 
are where you mostly see where you mostly see white people right. and, and Western visual culture. And and that's like, you know, coming like after leaving school, like being around, you know, professors and your constituents and you thinking like, oh, I need to be so deep in my work. Mm -hmm. I got to cross reference African American with this Western ideal and, you know, debunk how they think about us and all this other bullshit. And it's like, that's, it's just not, that's not it. Yeah. And that's where we keep falling short. Why are we keep trying to compare and see, like, put ourselves in that? It's like, we created so much. We need to just focus on that. Mm -hmm. But this is at a time where I was trying to say, hey, you know, what if a street hustler was in, you know, a t the Italian, during the Italian Renaissance, mm -hmm. how flashy would he be? Mm -hmm. How good would he look? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because he would create the new look for everybody. And that's what happens today. Like, we look at people on the street, like how they wear they, they garb, they sweater, hoodie, shoes, and loose, whether they tie their shoes up or not. And then we like, oh, that's kind of cool. Because how they rock it, how they wear it is their own way, their own style. Mm -hmm. So just playing on like the narrative, like what would it look like if a, if a hustler or just a, a, a young, modern black person was just strolling around, mm -hmm. you know? In the Italian Renaissance, just duped up, looking good, yeah. you know? Yeah. Chain on, flashy, you know, but still regal, still, they look good. <laughs> it does look good. Um, so, so this was earlier, earlier on. Yeah, that's, um, that's all acrylic. That's where, you know, I was really like in textbooks, mm -hmm. you know, researching like, you know, old artists, trying to look at their style and, you know, cross reference with other images that I saw from people just on the street mm -hmm. and really just, matching mixing them together yeah. and finding that medium and how they can work well together yeah. and it was great I love I love that style yeah but I thought I, I was boxing myself in yeah to be black artists yeah like this name to uh, of course I'm black I don't have to keep doing black art they that's obvious you know yeah but so much that sometimes like you you, you feel that you have to do this in order to get everybody else to understand what you're doing mm -hmm. because if you just jump out doing stuff like this it might go over people's heads and mm -hmm. they don't they won't get it or the people that you want to get understand the work won't appreciate it and that's that doesn't do a service for me i want my people to understand why i'm doing this work because yeah. it's for them yeah so you have you have moved from this style um and and i think it's really interesting to have these these um, two side by side because you have moved on, you've progressed and grown um, in the type of work you make, both in both visually mm -hmm. and also uh, in your in your technique. This is uh, really really tightly and precisely done, and this is this is more loose. Um, mm -hmm. You're a little more experimental with uh, you know letting things drip using um, different. Uh, media that looks like maybe chalk you're actually carving into the canvas talk mm -hmm. about the transition from that to this um so this so you now in my earlier work it was about like you know being resourceful with the medium like using every little drop because i mean i mean everybody here the same term starving artists it's you know it, it, it's real you know like yeah. our supplies is expensive <laughs> even the cheap stuff yes, like it starts to add up and even when you're not selling stuff and you're just trying to like build on to like your craft you know it, it gets pricey so in the beginning i was using you know very cheap acrylic and i'm trying to use every little ounce of it adding water whatever it can to like make sure we're using all of it because hey mm -hmm. you know we're not selling work at this point <laughs> so i think the time goes into it because you really want to be very like precise with everything because you're like okay this is how i'm going to be able to eat this is how i pay my bills so it was like very tight mm -hmm. and it's not fun doing work like that, you know? <laughs> that felt like a job. But yeah. this, moving into like my newer work, I wanted to, this is something that I've always wanted to do. And it was like, could I believe in myself enough to step out and do a style that, that I truly care about? Cause you know, sometimes when you're doing work and I don't know if any other artists can like contest it, it's like, sometimes you do stuff just to please other people. Sure. A lot of times you do stuff to please other people. And it gets to a point where that doesn't work for, as for the artist no more, and it starts to kill your creativity. Mm -hmm. And you hit a point where it's like, how many portraits can I paint? Sure. 
Serious. Like, yeah. how many portraits can I paint of black people that say I'm strong and I'm black? Yeah. yeah. What, what else can I do to connect with other people just everyday life? Mm -hmm. yeah. Share, yeah, share personal so, experience. Personal experience. Yeah. So stuff like this where it's like, and I feel like this is what art should be. It should be, it should make you question the piece. Mm -hmm. Is it done? Is he finished? Is that how he wants it? Why is it drip? That's, and it's, it's daring too. All of it's not complete. The clouds are whatever. You, you kind of make it what you want. Mm -hmm. And I love that about art. Or even artists that take pride in saying, hey, this is my finished work, whether it's complete or not. Mm -hmm. It's some, it's, mm -hmm. I, I think artists learn to take power back from the viewers to say, hey, this is the work and this is how I decide to present it to you. Yeah, yeah. Enjoy it's, it or don't enjoy it. Yeah. I really, I, I, and we've talked about this before, but I just, um, I just love the direction you're headed because um, I think, I, I think some, some artists may think that there's confidence in precision. Oh, for sure. Um, and, and working a piece and providing every detail like oh, you yeah. have in that. I did, yeah. Yeah, and then, but here, but there's confidence in, in looseness too, mm -hmm. um, to be able to take a brush and just decide, you know what, I'm gonna do that one, that one mark. She needs that one yellow mm -hmm. highlight. Um, it's really so. just being a kid again. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like tapping in and being a kid because yeah. when you look at kids do art, they have no like, the way they see things is, is how do I say this? Their imagination is not like contaminated with all the other stuff that we are dealing with. Like, mm -hmm. you know, bills, our jobs, our bosses, like that stuff gets in our head. So we have to, okay, well, we have to do it this way. Kids, they're doing it how they, what feels good to them. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to go back to, like what feels good. Yeah. Like she's literally like on fire cause she's running so fast. Yeah. She's smoking the dudes. It's like, and I can remember like there was a girl in our neighborhood, Latoya Williams, like she was a tomboy, but she played football, she played yeah. basketball and she smoked all of us. Yeah. Shout Even the first girl I got beat up by, yeah. like she was like untouchable. Yeah. But, and that's the time where you gotta like, just go back to your childhood and remember like just running through the neighborhood knowing everybody's house, knowing everybody that yeah. on the block, because everybody knows you, everybody knows your mom. Yeah. That's how I grew up. Like yeah. everybody knew when it, somebody hear a whistle, oh, that's Beverly calling for Matthew. Yeah. It's just so, I, I just I just love, it's been, so, like I said, it's been so great to talk to you and um, you are just in, in this talk right here, mm -hmm. in how you talked about this piece and how you talked about this piece, you can definitely tell you have like settled into oh, yeah. um, a style and, and the way you talk about it is so much more, um, you're, you can just tell you're really yeah, excited I, I, about it. I enjoyed this yeah. more because again, it was, it's just confidence. It's just building yeah. on the confidence that you thought you had, you know, when you first start out, you, you got to lie to yourself to keep yourself going. Yeah. You know, you, oh, I'm so good. I can do this. Uh, I'm the best artist. It's like, bro, stop. No, you're, yeah. you're, not, you're not there yet, you know? And, and you're really doing stuff just to please other people. So, yeah. but when you step in and doing something that you just love and yeah. you appreciate and you could care less if, you know, it sells or not, I think that's the, that's the beauty right there. Yeah. And that's where real art comes from. Yeah. You know, when you're just doing it how you want to. Yeah. Because who wants to see, like, copy cutouts of s surreal pictures of, whoever your favorite celebrity is, who cares? Right. Who cares? <laughs> Honestly, who cares? Yeah. Like, how about something that really speaks, that it's, it, it touches and your kids, your mom, your grandma can all take a sense of it and be like, oh, I can, I remember when we used to run mm -hmm. or, oh, Jimmy had a car like that or <laughs> yeah, whatever it may be like, oh, our first house was wood yeah. or, People it's just. People can, can place themselves mm -hmm, They place themselves right in our and it's yeah. like, that's what I love. Yeah. Like, it's not just, I'm black, y'all, and I'm black, you know, yeah, I got that, yo, I, I did that, but, yeah. and I'm still that, like, I'm not yeah. trying to, like, overstep that, like, I'm still, yeah, that's still there, that's still there, but yeah, but, you know, we, I want something that resonates with everybody, yeah, yeah, so when we met at your studio, uh, another thing that we talked about that not, we didn't directly talk about it, but it kept coming up, and so I wanted to ask you about it was the role of mentorship in your life. Um, it seemed like you had a mentor uh, 
in the arts uh, or in art early on. And then you also talked about, um, you talked about your professors at Heron. Mm -hmm. And then you also talked about eventually wanting to give back and be a mentor yourself. So just talk about that a little bit. Um, So my first, um, so growing up, I was like, uh, I call myself like a summer camp kid. I was in a summer camp every year. uh, And I think that's just majority like inner city kids, just like in summer camps and you know, that's just a way of life. Uh, but one summer, one year, I went to Kaleidoscope, which is out on, on the east side on 46, and uh, the the counselor or the guy over name was Mr. R, uh, Robert Nunley, and um, he was a different male figure for me because growing up, like I had, I got two older brothers, and they were like, you know, brothers. They beat you up, they play basketball, they wrestle, you know, the, the normal. Mm-hmm. But Mr. R was like nature trail mix. He drove a van. Uh, he didn't listen to no music in his car. It was like NPR radio, or radio, and uh, he played ping pong and tennis, and he had us doing sports that I was wasn't accustomed to. And I, I mean, I'm a mean ping pong player like now. So if anybody <laughs> wants to take me up, but uh, you know, no, and I attest that to Mr. R. So one one year I was trying to do something nice for my mother. I was like, oh, every artist, I'm gonna make her something. Yeah. So I'm pretty tired. She was tired of all the pinch pots that I made her. So I was like, I'm going I'm to make her like a, a four, like a, I'm going to present something to her. I don't know what I was thinking. But I had it all drawn out. So I know my mother loved jazz music. So I made like these little jazz figures and like these little people playing. And I took it to Mr. I was like, hey, can you help me do this? And he looked at me like, you did this? Because I was like the, the kind of like the troublemaking kid. Like I was getting into trouble. I was, I was just a, I was a hyper kid, just kind of into everything. And once he saw that, he kind of took me to the side and was like, yo, you got something. Like, you can actually draw. You're actually creative. And from there, he started to take me, like, on Saturdays and take me to the park and allow me to draw, like, pencils and drawing boards. Basically, like, nothing, like, fancy with the, the medium, but just drawing and getting my interests involved in it, which, which was really nice. Um, and then after that, I kind of dropped art again. Um, you know, just getting older, I, I was focused more on sports, but then uh, once I went to college, um, my first professor, Anila, I really took a, a, a real liking to her. Mm-hmm. Um, for one, she was an artist that talked it and walked it. Talked to what? She talked art and she walked it oh, because yeah. her, her work was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And her story, her background, and I felt that I connected with her story. Of, and I was like, I was like a doberman pincher ears up like listening all whatever she said i was i was listening so and it helped me see myself different as an artist and then i gained my confidence back and as i was trying to figure out where to direct myself and where to take my art i was just on the internet like searching for who is doing what i'm doing from here Mm -hmm. um and then i ran across Logan hamilton yeah Um, local artist yeah he's a local artist but he does vinyl work Mm -hmm. um but his stuff was on Empire. And uh-huh. I was like, oh, okay, on he got TV, the, yeah. he's on TV, so maybe <laughs> I should go talk to him. Yeah. And of course I had no way of like finding this guy. So I did like what every other millennial does. I inboxed him on <laughs> like social media or something. I don't think he even like wrote back, yeah. but I had saw him at like an art store and I like stopped him like a fanboy. Like, hey, hey, stop, stop. You're loving, aren't you? Of course, you, know, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> I know it's him and he knows. But I was like, hey, I saw your work and I want to come talk to you because I want to do art, but I don't know what I'm doing, basically. Yeah. And, you know, he opened, and still to this day, he's still the same. Like, gives me good advice, mm-hmm. uh, good pointers, give me honest feedback. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just That's, all around great guy. Yeah. His dad is great, too. I mean, his dad even gives me great advice on yeah. what I should be doing and what to, how to build on to my career as an artist. Yeah. So. That's so and, great. That's a... That's, uh, you know, as the Arts Council, we always try to tell emerging artists, you know, find find a mentor, find someone who, you know, does maybe does visually the kind of work mm-hmm. you are interested in, but also is good at the business side. So that's that's huge. That's awesome. And it, it keeps you like motivated because mm-hmm. if you don't see anybody from like where you from doing it, you'll kind of give up or lose not give up, but you'll lose hope. Yeah. And, you know, meeting and still, you know, being a, like meeting up with Logan and being able to hang out with him like just keeps that fire going to even want to do it to the next artist that's like coming up to 
like, hey, this guy has something, or maybe he doesn't you know, have everything in line. Hell, because I don't have everything in line, but whatever I can do to help the next, I'm willing to do that. Yeah. You know, so that's what I probably, well, just, that's what I'm inspired to do, like, just to keep, continue to give back. Yeah. Maybe be that person for, for but, an up and coming artist. Hopefully, if they like my work enough to be yeah. like, hey, you're Matthew, and yeah. they always like your work and all, like, that'd be great. Yeah. Even if they don't like it, I still want to help them, because I feel like, it's not enough of it in a city. And I think that's why so many other artists go to different states and stuff like that. Cause you know, we always scream the word community, but I don't think we know how to properly do community, sure. you know? So when you just like giving back and don't want nothing in return and you showing up to their events and giving them honest feedback, that's, that's what it's all about right there. Yeah. So it goes a long way. Yeah, that's a good segue to, you know, you're talking about community and, and, and learning from other artists. What is um, what does it mean for you to be at the Circle City Industrial Complex where you have a studio uh, and are surrounded by other artists? It makes me feel like I'm back at art school. Yeah. You know, like that competition comes back. Um, the, the sense of like just bouncing ideas off of other artists, getting them to come into your studio. Like I have like the studio where it's like community based where I just leave it open. Well, I should, Sometimes, but allow, you know, if, if somebody of my friends need like some paint, whatever, like my studio's open for them to go in and get it. Yeah. That's kind of how I leave it. So yeah. we got to help each other out. Yeah. You know, that's the only way we can make it, you know. Especially in 2020. Especially in Which 2020. Which is not 2020 like, Well, 2021, like, but... the, well, the next step, you know what I'm saying? Like no New Year's resolution. Like this is just the next step to like 2020. Like yeah. where do we take that? Yeah. Um, so speaking of 2020, you know, how, how was it being um, an artist in 2020? Artist turned activist. That's yeah. what 2020 was. It was, you know, if you were an artist that was behind the canvas, like you got the chance to come out and speak up, let your voice be heard. I think a lot of artists didn't know that they had a voice. Um, and well, I'll, let me say it this way. I don't think a lot of artists at that time thought that their voice meant something mm -hmm. to the greater cause of what was going on. And I think that was a, a eye opener for me that I was called to uh, communicate or, you know, um, uh, communicate visually something that was you know, hard to, hard to stomach, you know, but to visually conceptualize an idea that bring us together or it can show some type of sense of moving forward. Um, so, you know, that was, uh, it, it's, it's, it's a double sore. It, I felt good to be able to be called, but then again, it was kind of like, is this really my battle? Right. To be it's taken, a lot to put on your it's, it's a lot to put on for an artist to speak up for when it's something that happens. So, mm -hmm. It's, it happens so often in our community mm -hmm. that now that they want us to speak up and say something, that's kind of, I don't know. It kind of made my eyes kind of, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. So yeah. talk about, um, and if you, if you don't want to go, and this is to, for, this is off the record, <laughs> you know, if you don't, if you don't want to go too far down that path, that's mm -hmm. fine. I know we talked about that a little bit mm -hmm. when we got together, but, um, um, the next thing I was going to ask is um, talking about the public art that you've made versus mm -hmm. the art that you that you make in your studio. Mm -hmm. um, you know what? I, mean, I don't want to get questions. too passionate and cuss, but we can go. <laughs> like what, let's, yeah. let's we can, we can. If it don't work out, we just okay. You know, we'll just we'll, talk to Ty. Yeah, Ty. Ty just had to <laughs> chop that out. Yeah. But yeah, we can talk about it though. Okay. So. Um, Talk a little bit about your 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 public art experience. You've done two murals, the Jiffy Lube, and the uh, mural for racial justice, which mm -hmm. again is hanging behind yeah. us. Talk about that versus uh, the work that you make in your studio. So the one for the racial injustice was like the biggest one for me. Uh, I was able to do you know, three pieces on the North Capitol building, which is the old city county building. Um, but it was a call to do something for the police injustice that was going on um, around the world. So, you know, call to, I, be, I believe it was 12 to 16 other artists that were uh, involved. And 
it was a it was a tough time, you know, and, it, and it's still a tough time to, you know, be able to talk about the situation. Um, but you know, but sorry, but to go on on task, uh, I created three pictures uh, to just inspire mm -hmm. uh, the black community, just to kind of keep us together, because you know, for us, this this happens more often than usual, and. Um, yeah, I think it was just new for like white America to like actually open their eyes and get behind it. Mm -hmm. So that was, it was a new visual for them to like, oh, like we actually see what's going on. Like this is wrong, you know? Yeah. So it, it was kind of like, I was happy to do it because I always love promoting my artwork, you know? Mm -hmm. But then I was like, what happens when the next black man dies? Like what happens when the next, next time someone shot, killed, cold, it's like, do you guys have like something else or another opportunity or like what does that call look for then? Yeah. You know, so it's, it, it has I mean, a lot of times like people don't again seeing this as humans, like not just as like a marketing pitch, not as just something that's like, oh, this is this is what's buzzing right now. Let's right. focus on this. I mean, that literally had the whole world at like standstill. George Floyd death like that had everybody at a standstill yeah like cold like it was cold in the in the world yeah like and even white people was like they understood like damn I know what it feels like to be black a little bit yeah you know what I mean like and I had a lot of people come and tell me that and it was like well yeah welcome to my world you and you kind of understand why some of us can be aggressive or angry or you know not always smiling or because it's like we see this every day we grew up with this yeah you know, and now that you and your, you know, privileged life can see and understand it, what do we do now? Yeah. Like, honestly, what do we do now? And I'm all about that conversation. Like, what do we do? Because I, I, I'm happy that they are actually starting to get behind it and, you know, want to support it and be what the, they say that our allies or whatever. But, you know, yeah. is this so something you... that's just going to be swept under a rug again? Or yeah. is this something that we can actually move forward with? Yeah. And I feel like art is a tool that we can use as a conversation piece to move the conversation forward. And I think that's why they, you know, went out to reach out to other black artists to push that conversation. Um, however, is the converse, did the converse, did the actual conversation get had? I don't know. Yeah. Did the murals do justice for the city? Yeah. I don't know. And will the will this progress continue? And will this pro progress continue? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. You know, and that's where it's like the other side of the sword for me. It's like, again, I'm happy to be a part of it. I'm always down for the cause. Yeah. If it's art, I'm down. Yeah. But if it's just to be, you know. It needs to be more than just that moment. It needs to be momentum that builds. That's a fact. Yeah. It has to be. Because yeah. this stuff happens every day. Yeah. After George Floyd, it was one to probably the next day. Yeah. What we talking about. Yeah. So it's like, that's kind of where I stand on that one. Thank you. Thank you for that. For sure. Appreciate your, appreciate you talking about that. Yeah. Um, how to segue from that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, Sorry. that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> that segue. <laughs> um, and that's why, like, I, I didn't want to, like, because that's where, like, I know sometimes my passion can convey, like, oh, I, I even felt it myself, like, because it, it it bothers me, it angers me, like, cause I was never one to even like get involved in politics mm -hmm. or the news or anything like that. Yeah. I was like an artist that wanted to stay in this yeah. artist shell. Your, your work is about your own experience. But some people always yeah. assume that since you're an artist, that this is a part of your work. Right. Someone in this, this, this has, this has to do something for you, for you to want to create. Yeah. Don't put that on me. Yeah. Don't put that on creators yeah. because that is a lot of pressure. Sure. To say I have to go out and create something that you have to be the voice for, yeah. Yo, yeah. Really? Yeah. I don't know about it. You, you know saying like, it's just a lot to personally deal with. You know that. Sure. Am I ready to go create and be at the highest level to create something effectively when all this is going on? Hell, even when I'm doing pieces in the city, I get the the cops called on me. Oh, so it's like, how effective can I be yeah. when it really hits home? Like that's on TV. But then when you're doing something paid for, I got like a, la a langer on and everything. Yeah. Has a, a sign that says I'm art council approved or whatever. You still get the cops called on you because it's like yeah. the double sword. Yeah. 
<laughs> so. Is doing more public art, is that a goal of yours? For sure, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Jiffy Lou was like the greatest, was like one of the best experience, like working scale wise. Mm -hmm. um, having a mentor like Ish Muhammad, he was like great. Like he just taught me so much about how to be prepared time and time management and stuff like that. Like I think it, I, it's something for every young artist, emerging artist that should get behind that opportunity. Yeah. Uh, I mean, just to sharpen your tool belt, like you, you got to. So, um, and I love the reaction that I get from you know, people driving by, taking pictures with my work. So, I mean, that's no bit greater feeling than that. So more public art is definitely in the works for me, for sure. Yeah, it's great. Um, talk about some of your uh, influences who, uh, you know, deceased, living, who are some artists that you... Um, so, like, I always like to go towards, like, the artists that were doing stuff their way, like, rebellious. Miles Davis is like one of my favorite artists mm -hmm. of all time. And just the way he lived and died for art, you know, music. He didn't like people call, he, he even like would get mad if you called jazz, jazz, you know what I mean, jazz music, because he was like, you know, don't box, don't box my stuff in, like, don't, what you doing? And I just love how he come across as an artist, because he lived and died by what, he, he, when he was wrong, he was wrong hard. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like he. He was committed to how wrong he was, and I love that. Uh -huh. um, and he stood on that. So Miles Davis, I, I love Miles Davis. Uh, visual artist, um, Basquiat, of course, he's like the first like introduction for a lot of black artists. You know, if you're you know, searching, you know, Basquiat's gonna be the first person because he, he was an artist. You know, he was what you, I mean, when you think of an artist, is he's like the first image. Mm -hmm. You know, he lived what, his art. He, he had to. Oh make yeah, to, I mean he yeah. lived and breathed it. You know, barely wore. I mean he he just did what he wanted. Walked the streets, did what he wanted. You know, partied all night, hang out with celebrities, go to, go downtown, and you know do a piece all night. And you know, he lived a life. He had a someone to you know push his work, and all he had to do was just create. <laughs> that's like the life. Uh, but that's not for every artist. You know, like his style and his lifestyle was. You know, it's much more than, you know, just a, a creative individual. He was, mm -hmm. he was, it was dark. Um, but that's what made better work, I feel, sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, Basquiat, great inspiration for, for me when I first started. Um, Henry Taylor uh, is another great artist that I just recently actually uh, found out about. And just his style of uh, painting. He, he was really interesting. He said, I'm trying to be the worst painter in the room. <laughs> And I thought that was really great to say, like, you know, who's trying to be the worst painter in the room? Like, you know, from a, a visual standpoint, like you're trying to be like the best, but uh, and just the stuff that he paints, like he might have like Ronald McDonald with like soldiers um, surrounded by like Washington, D.C. You know, obviously there's a deeper yeah. message there, and it's, but it's just so like, who thinks of that? Yeah. You know, who thinks of that? And like his paintings are not all the way finished. It's like drip marks everywhere. Yeah. You could, and then when you hear him talk, it's like, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> it, it like, there's definitely, like we were talking about earlier, there's definitely like that confidence oh, yeah. with the use of materials. Or not even knowing what he's doing and just doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know, just like faking it till you make it. It's like, well, this line mark works. Let's just yeah. keep going, you know? And that that's, it's, Man, it's, it's, it's beauty in that. Like, yeah. I, I love that about an artist. Uh, Noah Davis, yeah. uh, who's another artist that I recently just uh, got his book off of Amazon. And I mean, just phenomenal. Like, just the way they were able to attack, not even like approach a canvas and make it so like, there's subtle marks, there's subtle mark makings. Mm -hmm. uh, how they allow like the drips like this to take over the whole picture and, and Again, that confidence that they had, just the, how they approached work. Yeah. It was something that I, I never saw before. Like they were making work to really disturb the viewer. And I love that. Yeah. You know, sometimes you're making work to make them feel good. And it's like, nah, they were doing the opposite. And I was like, mm, I like that. Yeah. I like, Cause it's like their work matches their personality. Yeah. You know, and that's what, I, that's what I'm moving towards. Like, I'm like an introvert, but I love human interaction. At the same time, like, 
I'm like this passionate, over aggressive sometimes like person, but I've still had this soft side where I just want to help everybody. Yeah. So how do you find something that, how do you find this, this nice medium and, you know, put it on canvas where people are like, oh, I can, that reflects Matthew, you know, that's, that's, that's him on a canvas. So that's what I'm after. And that's what they, and that's what I love that they have accomplished in their work. Yeah. And I'm still look. I'm in still like, just on the hunt for other artists that are doing something rebellious. Yeah. You know. Full circle. Henry Taylor did a painting of Miles Davis. Yes, he did. Yeah. In front of the, front White, of the House. White House. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> yeah. So it's just, man. And I just think he, he, when him like Henry and Noah, like they're doing work that's it resonates with everybody. Yeah. Um. You know, visually, it's not the best painting, but I think that's what the viewer sometimes needs. You don't always need this picture that it's like a portrait of like the thirty, the president or something like that, how, you know, real it can look in the flesh tones and the shadows. Like, that stuff is, yeah, we get it. Like, how playful can you get yeah, with a medium? A and that, that has a feeling that almost feels like music or a ballet or a dance and it just like whimsically just goes together it just flows yeah you know and that's that's art right there yeah that's that's art well that's a beautiful way to close things out i, I love agree. that I um agree. it's been so nice to talk to you it's like i said um when we when we did your studio visit i could have hung out forever but i had to get <laughs> home to dinner so. that's awesome <laughs> this was up so um how can people how can people find you on instagram do you have a website do you uh, have any upcoming exhibitions What's yeah going so on? Uh, god willing 2020 plays out right 2021 <laughs> plays out right yeah but right now i'm just uh they can find me on social instagram so it's matthew underscore e cooper um, I have a Facebook as well, same first and last name, Matthew Cooper. Uh, working on the website, just like everybody else, <laughs> comingsoon.com. Um, and then uh, I do have some upcoming shows. I do have a solo show at CCIC in May. Okay. Oh, um, and then I have another solo exhibit at the airport in December, I believe, that will be up for viewing. Yeah. And calendar is still filling so if anybody want to show let me know that's great <laughs> well thank you so much thank you thank you for having me